story to tell. In a war, tanks play an extremely important role in attacking and supporting infantry. During the Vietnam War, the topography of this Southeast Asian country was dominated by mountains and forests, which was not very suitable for the deployment of tank corps. Therefore, appearing in the Vietnam battlefield were mainly light tanks. As for the North Vietnamese Army, they were equipped with the PT-76 tank from the Soviet Union. This is a light tank, strong firepower, high speed, and good maneuverability on hilly terrain. Very suitable for the North Vietnamese Army's concealment and guerrilla attack strategy. Sebastian Roblin, an American military researcher, once commented on the national interest. The PT-76 seems like a minor oddity of the Cold War, a Soviet amphibious light tank with thin armor and an unimpressive gun. Certainly, it seemed bound for a rough treatment on modern battlefields full of heavy weapons and heavier tanks. But during the Vietnam War, the PT-76 demonstrated exceptional combat and survival capabilities, which amazed U.S. military experts. The Soviet PT-76 light tank was introduced in the early 1950s and soon became the standard reconnaissance tank of the Soviet Army and the other Warsaw Pact armed forces. It was quietly exported to another friendly states like India, Iraq, Syria, North Korea, and North Vietnam. Overall, some 25 countries used the PT-76 as a light tank. The PT-76 weighs only 14.6 tons, has a length of 7.63 meters, a width of 3.15 meters, and a height of 2.32 meters. The PT-76 has a typical tank layout, the steering compartment at the front the combat compartment in the center and the engine compartment at the back. The tank has a three-man crew, with the commander also acting as the radio operator and gunner. The main firepower of the tank is a 76.2mm T-56T gun with a reverse of 40 rounds. The second weapon is a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun with 1000 rounds. PT-76 is equipped with a V6 diesel engine, capacity of 240 horsepower. It can reach a maximum road speed of 44 km per hour. The PT-76 is also capable of amphibious. It has a flat, bow-shaped hull, which is hermetical and ensures minimal resistance when the tank is afloat. The tank can swim at up to 10.2 km per hour and has a range of 100 km. It can cross most water obstacles and can also swim in the sea. During the early period of the U.S. military intervention in Vietnam, there were practically no armor vehicles in the Democratic Republic of Vietnam equipment system. The situation changed with the help of the Soviet Union and China. Soviet PT-76 along with T-54s, T-55s, and Chinese Tab 59s, Tab 62 tanks formed the bulk of the People's Army of Vietnam Armor Forces. PT-76 first action during the war in Vietnam was on the night of February 6, 1968 at the Battle of Lang Ve. This was the garrison of a unit of U.S. Special Forces. 13 PT-76 of the North Vietnam Army 202 Armor Regiment 
spearheaded an assault against approximately 24 green barracks, 500 Vietnamese irregulars, and 350 Laotian royal soldiers. For the first time on the Indochina battlefield, the U.S. Army and the Saigon forces had to deal with the enemy tank force. They were shocked by the attack. From three directions, the Army Liberation Tank appeared, broke through the minefield, crossed the bare wire fence and obstacles. The 76mm gun bombarded the enemy's fire points, crushing the enemy's resistance creating conditions for infantry to overflow into the base, destroying the target. The American soldiers used the M40 106mm recoilless rifles to knock out three vehicles. The US commanders began firing off their disposable M72 66mm anti-tank rockets a short range. The weapon should have easily penetrated the light tanks, but instead repeatedly misfired, missed, or failed to have any effect when they did hit. One team reportedly hit the same tank with nine rockets to no result. Another tank hunting group finally managed to set a PT-76 on fire with a hit to the rear armor. The fourth and last one destroyed in the battle. All the Americans' counter-attacks have failed. They requested support from nearby Kaesang, which was unable to help, as it was also under siege. The Battle of Benhead was the only tank battle held by the North Vietnamese and American Army during the Vietnam War. The opponents of the PT-76 were the US M48 Baton medium tanks. It was a pretty formidable opponent with a 90mm gun and 175mm of turret armor. March 3, 1969, the Special Forces Camp at Benhead was attacked by the North Vietnamese Army 202 Armor Regiment. One of the PT-76 had detonated a landmine, which not only alerted the camp, but also lit up the other PT-76 attacking the fire base. Flares had been sent up, thus exposing adversary tanks, but sighting in on major flashes. One PT-76 scored a direct hit on the turret of a M48, killing two pan crewmen and wounding two more. A second pattern, using the same technique, destroyed a PT-76 with their second shot. At daybreak, the battlefield revealed the wreckage of two PT-76 and one BTR-50 armor personnel carrier. For a long time, the two sides avoided a collision, but once an observation plane spotted a PT-76 crew watching their vehicle in the Benhai River. The plane radioed the tank's coordinates to an M48 of the U.S. Marine 3rd Armor Battalion at Con Tien, which raised its gun barrel high up into the air to attack with indirect fire. The third high explosive shell landed squarely on the tank, causing the crew to abandon the vehicle which was later hit by an F-4 Phantom airstrike. In 1972, the North Vietnamese Army again used the PT-76, but unfortunately, the tank fell into fire from the UH-1B helicopter. After losing five vehicles, the Liberation Army Command realized that using a light armor vehicle without coordination with the T-54-55 main battle tank was too risky. This was adjusted during the Ho Chi Minh campaign 1975. So far, the Vietnamese army maintains hundreds of upgraded PT-76 in its inventory, as well as Chinese-made 
Tab 63. My video of PT76 Glide Tank S here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Đã lên gọi là cầm cành rồi còn đi ngược chiều